When we say it, we speak it. Point blank, please believe me, we mean it. Point blank, if you watch us, you see it. Point blank to the Lord Almighty, point blank. Alright. I wasn't born to be settled. If you don't want to watch it, we don't care, disappear We talk straight, no go round thing, we no fear God is we protect her own ear Why blank to take over the atmosphere When we say it, we speak it, point blank, please believe Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm Erica. And today we're going to be talking about racism. Okay, so racism is the belief that a particular race is superior or inferior to another, um, that a person's social and moral traits are predetermined by biological or inborn characteristics. Uh, racial separatism is the belief, most of the time based on racism, um, that Races should remain se segregated from each other, um, and basically, um, you're racist if you hate people because of the skin color of their skin or their race. Racism has existed throughout human history, and may be defined as the hatred of one person by another, or the belief that another person is less than human because of the color of their skin, their language, their culture customs, place of birth, or any factor that supposedly reveals the basic nature of that person. It has influenced war, slavery, the information of nations, and legal codes. Racial bullying is a type of racism where, where someone focuses on bullying because of your race, mm -hmm. ethnicity, or culture. Um, racism and racial bullying are wrong, and you can get help to make it stop. Racist bullying can include being called racist names or being sent insulting messages or threats, having your belongings damaged or having to see racist graffiti, personal attacks including violence or assault, being left out, treated differently or excluded, people making assumptions about you because of your color, your race or culture being different, um, being made to feel like you have to change the way that you look, Racist jokes, including jokes about your color, nationality, race, or culture. What is a hate crime? So according to the Criminal Court Code of Canada, um, it says that a hate crime is committed to intimidate, harm, or terrify not just a person, but an entire group of people to which the victim belongs. Mm -hmm. um, the victims are targeted for who they are. Um, not because of anything that they've done. And a hate crime is one where hate's the motive, and it can involve intimidation, harassment, physical force, or the threat of physical force against a person, a group, or a property. And racism and hate crimes go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, have you experienced any racism personally that's affected you? Yes. Um, I mean, there's a lot, but I think we're just going to tell two stories each. Mm -hmm. uh, so the one story would be uh, when me and my husband now, we were just dating, and we decided to leave the city and go into a smaller town for like a cute little lunch at a drive through But the drive through had like picnic tables and stuff where you hung out outside and just had a nice you know, lunch or supper. Right. And we were standing there and we were holding hands and there was like this older Caucasian man and he was standing um, behind us. And I just felt like he was just looking at us with like this disgust and just, I could just read his energy and his body language. And he was just not happy that, cause my husband is Caucasian he's Canadian, um, that he was dating me, um, this Asian girl. And you can just, I can just feel it. I can feel the hatred. I can feel like he totally thought that it was wrong, that, you know, Ryan should stick to his own kind. And I didn't say anything. I felt the hate. And I think I said something to Ryan after Ryan's like, oh yeah, who cares? Like, he's like, it's just little, you know, people are just He's probably old fashioned or whatever, mm -hmm. but I mean, it still didn't make it okay. No. And not that I, 
you know, cared if somebody that I don't know didn't like the fact that I'm not dating my own kind. It is up to me. Right. Um, but yeah, I felt that. And that was like recent. Like, you know what I mean? It was like probably five or six years ago. Yeah. Which is really sick. But anyways, mm -hmm. so another w story uh, would have to do with my dad. I was probably only 12 or 13. So my dad worked for this farmer. And of course, he was Caucasian and white. And he would just bully my dad and just do things to him like my dad would tell me like he would drive by and throw his garbage in our yard and my dad knew it was him because he would brag about it um and then we would have him over for dinner and he was married but he would always make like remarks or comments about like getting together with my mom and my dad of course didn't want to say anything because that's his boss and then it got to the point where after years of abuse, like it's probably my dad worked for him for like five years. Wow. So after years of abuse, um, so my dad's got to clean these things with like a hot gun that sprays up hot water. And anyways, he said his boss took it from him and like was pretending to joke, but like shot him in the head and it like burned his forehead and it was like bleeding and scabbing. And he made me take a picture of it so that he could report it to the labor board. And you know, he of course he quit then and didn't talk to him anymore but I mean that was just one story and just it made it really opened up my eyes like that you know even though we live in Canada that racism existed and that he, basically my dad was picked on and being hated because he wasn't born in Canada and because he wasn't Canadian or Caucasian mm -hmm. and it just really opened up my eyes because even going to school like I grew up in like it's a, it's a small city but I mean in the school there was only like a handful of colored kids mm -hmm. and you know you still kind of felt it sometimes like the racism like you know what I mean like all the colored kids stuck together because we all could relate to each other and we didn't really you know we just felt comfortable around each other right yeah. so that's where I find the difference between a small city and a big city, where a big city, there's lots of different cultures and races around. So when you go to school, the majority of people are colored and it's not uncomfortable, it's not weird. But when you live in a smaller town and it's either redneck or more blue collared, yeah. you that racism really stands out a lot and you feel it. So what about you? Um, yeah, so when I was in elementary school, we, um, my brother and I, uh, he was in grade two, I was in grade three, this girl, yeah, white Caucasian girl in grade six was bullying us and like, I don't know, just trying to torment us and like saying mean things and mm -hmm. um, like I don't really remember because I was too young. too young. But you felt it, you knew. I felt it, that it was because, yeah, we were black and... Um, and then she, yeah, so she kept bugging us, bugging us, and me and my brother always, like, had each other's back. So, like, it was, like, a, we were on a snowy hill. Yeah. And so we pushed her down the hill. <laughs> um, and, yeah, sorry, not sorry. Um, yeah, and so then we ended up getting called to the principal's office by, um, yeah, like, after that. And that girl never did. Like, there was no consequences for her, even though she instigated all of this. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I just remember feeling like I just knew at the time that that's why we were, we were getting in trouble and she wasn't getting in trouble was because we were people of color and we looked different than them, her, right? Mm -hmm. And the person who was talking to us, too, yeah. was white as well. And, like, so shortly after that, we changed schools um, and went to, like, the Catholic school across the street. We were in the public school before, then we went to Catholic school. And, yeah, pretty much the same sort of thing, like, just always feeling those, that racism and not very many people of color in our, our class or in our school and... Uh, yeah, like people would say the N word and everything to us. And so me and Claude, my brother, have a few times like just kind of whip people's asses. But anyway, like I don't 
respond think, that way now. <laughs> well, I, I think this is well, what the sad thing about society is that they use it so common in songs, right? Mm -hmm. They use it in songs all the time. So then people who sing the song or they just think it's okay because it's being used constantly, like there's nothing wrong with it. It's just being used like it's the word that you use every day, right? Exactly. To call or classify. Yeah. And I don't agree people. with that either. I mean, I just like, I love hip hop. I love rap music mm -hmm. and all of that. But yeah, I don't see the need. Like they try to just justify it that it's taking back the power of the word, but I just think it gives, I don't know. It just, I just don't think anyone should be saying that word or any sort of racial words. Just, mm -hmm. just don't like find something else to use instead to yeah. describe people, right? Yeah. And yeah. And the other story just was my dad and I and my brother, we went to uh, this place called Raleigh Park downtown for Caravest, like we parked there. And um, yeah, so we went down there and um, as we were coming back, we had like a day of fun, listening to music, getting eating good like Caribbean food and stuff. And as we're walking back, um, this white man is sitting on the car and probably in his like 40s and my dad was about that, like early 40s as well. Mm -hmm. And he said, he's like, he said the N word to my dad because um, my dad said, you know, that's my car, can yeah. you like get off my car? <laughs> and the guy responded in that way to him. And then was making other insults. I don't know if he said something about us too. And um, my dad, yeah, like, so then the guy jumped off and was like trying to attack my dad, but my dad countered him and like, he, yeah, kicked his ass. So go, Dad. Um, <laughs> and yes, I don't condone violence, but I will say that, and I will teach my kids this too, like, you don't start a fight, but you damn well will fin finish it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that's what happened there, is that he finished it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just remember feeling like a bit traumatized by that, like, because you're seeing your dad and you're afraid he will get hurt or yeah. whatever. And, and just to see someone be so hateful mm -hmm. because... Without even knowing you. Yeah. Like, just yeah. judging you because of the color of your skin and just, especially, like, when this guy saw that your dad was with his kids, too, like, to even go there, right? Just what type of person does that? I mean, obviously, with no IQ. Yeah. The IQ of an amoeba, basically. Yes. And actually less than. And just, like, ignorance without knowing anything and just, you know, attacking for no reason. Yeah. Like, oh. it was crazy. It was a little scary. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, I was like, go down. Like, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, like, he was, like, our hero that day and stuff and yeah. taught us to not... Yeah, not back down from a fight, but yeah, like don't instigate things with people. But yeah, yeah. So, uh, where do you think like the origin of racism comes for from, and why it happens? Yeah, um, I think it stems from like your parents, or you know how you're raised or whoever is raising you, it stems from there because you raise and you teach them to see past the color of somebody's skin. Because like you said, if a baby, um, a baby isn't racist when they play with other kids, they don't see the color of their skin. And if they do and they ask, then that is up to you as a parent to tell them that it's okay. Everybody's all different. Mm -hmm. We're all born differently. God created us all unique and beautiful in our own way. You know, and we didn't ask to be born of color, but obviously God knows that we need, you know, unity and just beauty comes in all colors and languages and races. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, I, I definitely feel like it's taught at home. Mm -hmm. Um it's taught at home and how you were raised in the, the environment that you grow up in. It teaches you who you are and how to treat people. Mm -hmm. And if I feel like a lot of it stems from insecurity as well. Like if your parents are insecure and they're teaching you not to talk to that kid cause he's black or 
that kid because he's Asian, um, they need to do a lot more. And if you are one of those parents that's doing that, you need to stop having kids. <laughs> like, please just, stop. Please stop having kids because we need to try to make this world better. And it starts with the people who are having kids and how they're raising them. You gotta teach them because you don't understand or you don't know. It, a lot of people are just scared of what they don't know. So it's easier to hate and spew hate when it's something that you have no idea instead of educating yourself and trying to understand that just because we look different and we you know, speak different languages and different cultures, we're all the same. We're all of the human race. Exactly. And we need to all love each other and unite and just try to understand one another instead of hating all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Just talk to one another and talk about what is going on and don't be, don't just like go off assumptions and, mm -hmm. you know, try to make sure you notice like everyone and treat everybody the same and don't like perpetuate, um, yeah, like stereotypes or things that you've like heard other people say that, yeah, or let's say you had true. one bad experience with somebody of color and you can't just categorize everybody else into that. Like, sorry, but not all Asians are super smart. We're not all bad drivers and we're not, we don't all own a convenience store, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you know, me as Asians, like I do make jokes and there's like movies and stuff that, you know, we watch and they make jokes about it. Um, like crazy rich Asians, like because Ryan understands a lot of the inside jokes on it, so right. it's okay for us to talk about it and joke about it. But there's a difference between joking about it and intentionally trying to hurt somebody or make them feel bad because of like their skin color or their race. There's yeah. a big difference between joking and having a good time and being able to make fun of the stereotypes that are out there, but also when it, somebody is actually really hating on you and being racist. Well, yeah, and you, like... You know when you feel the difference. And you, you know when someone is trying to negate um, your accomplishments mm -hmm. based on race, like, yeah. for instance, um, like, say if you get a job and they're trying to say, oh, it's affirmative action, yeah, why yeah. you got the job, yeah. but you're actually more qualified than them and have more experience yeah. and have worked hard to get there. And in, like, my case, people have said to me, like, with sports and, and, uh, with my singing mm -hmm. that the only reason like, Oh, I'm good at soccer or that I'm good at singing is cause I'm black. It's like, uh, yeah, not every black person is good at sports. Not every black person is good at singing and not every black person can dance. Like, yes. Um, a lot of us can, but that doesn't mean that's like just an ingrown trait. And it's, it's very insulting actually, because we like everybody works hard mm -hmm. for the achievements you have so it's like basically saying that you're lucky which anybody who is successful that would piss you off too if somebody said oh like you know mm -hmm. the only reason that you're like you're you own this company and you are so successful is because mm -hmm. you're lucky and your your family was lucky yeah. like so all of the times when people didn't see what you had to go through and all the times you got knocked down and got back up, people are just like pretending like that never happened and like you just appeared, mm -hmm. here, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, like racism isn't just against colored people. It happens all the time as well to Caucasian people as well, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it's not just saying that um, you experience racism all of a sudden just because you're Asian or black. That's not the case. Racism is just hating on somebody because you don't know and you don't understand um, what's different from you. Exactly. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're just going to give you some, we're going to give you eight ways to beat racism. Okay. First one, um, don't take the abuse. Everyone, no matter what their nationality or race, they deserve the right to live happily and free and deserve the respect to, you know, from discrimination. Know that you're not the one with the problem. Remember, you're not the one causing the trouble. You've done nothing wrong. Um, tell someone. So, you know, whether that's your teachers, friends, family, um, just let them know the situation so you can get their help and support. 
And yeah, just make sure that you speak up right away so that the problem doesn't become like huge. Keep evidence. Um, so either take footage on your phone or document in a notebook all the things that are happening to you, how you're feeling about it, and just creating a support group. Um, and then of course, taking action. Um, be prepared to speak out. Um, yeah, you know, be prepared um, to um, let people know just like how it's affecting you and your well-being. Mm -hmm. Keep safe and just be aware. I mean, obviously don't walk in life, you know, scared of looking over your shoulder all the time, but just be aware of any circumstances or situations or people who are attacking you. Um, if you're feeling vulnerable, just stick to a group of friends, have them with you. Um, never give up. Like you might feel that you're not able to tackle racism by yourself, which probably you won't be able to, mm -hmm. but you can seek out support and help from others where you can. And just remember that it's not cool to be like, to use racism and no one should have to put up with it. Get others involved. Um, you can start an anti-racism project, protests, newsletter at work, school, Set up a discussion group with people who can relate to you to help support each other and talk about it. Um, any issues that you have, if you are experiencing racism at work, report it to HR immediately or any labor board. Right. Right. So. Um, yeah. So, um, and if you witness racism or a victim of racism, then, you know, report it to your local police immediately. And I think right now we're just going to talk about what's been going on. Mm -hmm. Like events, what's happening. Globally. Yeah. What's happening in our world. Um, what I've been noticing, I don't really read the news or watch too much news, um, but I have been kind of just keeping up to date on certain things. Right. So I've been reading a lot of um, news about Asians who are getting attacked because of just for being Asian that a lot of people are like assaulting them on the streets. They're just walking down the street and they're just wearing their masks. All of a sudden they get attacked and they're just getting a lot of like hate spewed at them saying that you brought the virus from China. That's why everybody's dying and just really stupid, petty stuff that has nothing to do with, you know, people that live here. Well, and individuals that, yeah, because regardless of what you think, if you think it, like man-made or whatever trust me it's not Joe Blow on the street who is doing it mm -hmm. uh, it goes much deeper and it's also there's a spiritual Warfare. demonic element to all of mm -hmm. this as well right and yeah I mean I remember hearing about an elderly man um, being um, assaulted in a convenience store by mm -hmm. like somebody who's like half his age and it's like oh i'm sure you think you're tough now buddy like yay let's push an old man down yeah, um like you need to go back to school to educate yourself yeah and you need jesus yes, like you really you need, need more jesus. jesus in your life yeah um and let's talk about what's happening with i mean george floyd i mean unfortunately we send all of our love and prayers to everybody who's been affected by the george floyd murder mm -hmm. um not to say not all cops are bad there's bad people in all professions right not just police officers there's doctors there's lawyers yeah i mean yes like there's people who use abuse their position at the hospital to or their power power yes or their power period to um yeah, like to to deny service to people who who need it. Mm -hmm. um, and in the case of George Floyd, I mean, that was just it's like so disgusting, just so sad. Like what a sad world we live in. It is. And unfortunately, because he, you know, he lost his life, but at least there's movement happening and we have to be the change that we want to see. We can't just talk about wanting to do something. We actually have to do something and stand for justice and just un unite. 
exactly. as one race. We're all human. Yeah. We might look different. We might like different things. We might have different languages and different cultures. But at the end of the day, we're all, part of, the we're all part of the human race. And we need to under try to understand each other and love each other more instead of hating each other. Yeah. And um, I just want to say, yeah, I, I really don't like umbrella statements of saying like, yeah, all cops are bad. All mm -hmm. whoever is bad. No, there's, I truly believe most people are good people. And I truly believe that most people have good intentions towards other people. I think the problem is when it's like that, the thin blue line where people won't speak out against their fellow officers. Um, and like, I mean, there was three other officers there yeah. who were present and one of them is the brother-in-law of uh, the, the cop who was charged. And um, yeah, and his wife is, yeah, like that was her brother as and well. And she's Asian. Yeah, she's like, Asian. She said like <laughs> and, he was like perfect on book. Like he did everything right. Mm -hmm. That he was a gentleman, that he did all this. But looking at his picture, there's no emotion behind his eyes. There's something There's so there. much evil lurking behind there. And you can see it. He's got no there's remorse. No there's soul. nothing. There's no soul. And I'm not surprised. I mean, I hate to be judgy. But, I mean, I'm really not surprised by looking at his picture and the fact that he's had so many cases filed against him and nothing has happened except for one write-off. This is the problem here is because he's a cop. He can do no wrong. He's got great intentions, but he doesn't. If this, if the first case against him was thoroughly investigated by the city, then they would have figured out that there was just so many problems there. Exactly. Yeah, like there needs to be better... Um, background checks and um, just analyzation of people's mm -hmm. like personalities and like what they what they're about like their values and everything yeah because like you said yeah this should never have happened it should have never and escalated to this point where no he ended up murdering somebody like he had so many cases against him for assault yeah and all of a sudden, like, he has the power because he's gotten away with so much that he feels like he could get away he's with murder. He that exactly, he's untouchable, and this is what happened. I mean, this has opened up everybody's eyes to what's happening out there, and this is nothing new either. Police brutality, it's nothing new. No, it's not. It's just coming to light now, and, like, everybody is just keeping their eyes more on the police force now than ever, right? Yeah, and I mean, like, here in Canada, they're so many people who are saying that racism doesn't exist in Canada and like <laughs> I just have to roll my eyes at that yes there is and especially against indigenous people they've yes. been marginalized and uh, mm -hmm. victimized for years uh, going back to yeah. when th this country was settled yeah and yeah, I mean, there's so many rude things that are said about Native people. There's all these women who have disappeared, mm -hmm. and there's no investigation, and or people go to trial, and um, there's so much evidence, and mm -hmm. they're acquitted. I, like, just such disgusting stuff that is going on. And, I mean, yes, there's... And they're just sweeping it under too. the rug. Yeah, it's like, swept under the rug. Now we just have to bring to light, like, whatever is wrong, we need to try and fix that to move forward, to have a better future, to be living, like, to live in harmony and just love each other. Yeah. Yeah, because, um, yeah, there's, I know that there's people, um, like, I have friends, like, one of my brothers, my brother's best friend is, like, six foot six, black guy, and like the sweetest teddy bear that you would ever know and like has a good job and you know it's never been in any trouble and he's been pulled over driving while black mm -hmm. and I know other people who have too and just things that, like not even doing anything wrong and mm -hmm. not given an explanation as to why you're being pulled over no ticket issue yeah. just oh like 
you shouldn't be driving that car because yeah. you're a black person or whatever. Or you look suspicious because yeah, you're black. Exactly. Like. Yeah. So, you know, it just needs to stop. It needs to not be part of our narrative. Yeah, and so everybody just needs to step up and you, we all need to take accountability for ourselves, responsibility for our actions and really analyze mm -hmm. to ourselves what kind of biases we have towards everyone, like mm -hmm. whether it's people of color, or if it, yeah, like white people or yeah, whoever, think... cops, like just everyone, like because it doesn't serve any of us to have these views in our, you know, and if you see these things happening to people, speak up, speak up and don't like, just be silent about it. I think it. nowadays, I mean, now it's more common for somebody to speak up and record it, record it or, you know, know what's right instead of like back in the day. Right. And I feel like you can definitely tell what kind of person somebody is by taking a look at their friends. If they have friends of all races and colors or if it's just all clones. Right. Um, of yourself. Yeah. Of yourself. And I think with everything that's happening with the riots, I mean, it's good to protest and so that there's change and justice, but it's not okay to vandalize or hurt other people or steal things. Like that is not an excuse. That is doesn't give you the excuse to go and commit crime when you're fighting for something that's just so important. Well, exactly. You know, like, that's just so sickening that so many stores are getting robbed or vandalized during the protests. And these people, you know, think that they're doing something good, but they just have criminal activities on their mind. And they're just well, using that as a fake to, like, create I, all of this. I really believe that the people who are doing that, like, they're not really about the cause. They're, yeah. They're, they're people who are diminishing the cause and who are just, yeah, seeing this as an opportunity to create, like, mm -hmm. anarchy and chaos. Yeah. Not really caring about, like, what they're doing. And, yeah. like, totally. and it's people of all races who are doing these yeah. things, too. Because I know that it's, like, being said that, oh, like, all these black people are doing this. Like, yeah. no, there's people of lots of different yeah. races who are. But different. I would say the majority of people who are out there protesting peacefully trying to, mm -hmm. um, you know, show through their actions that, yeah, we can get justice and peace without being destructive, being um, violent, you know, mm -hmm. and just basically being, yeah, like silent witnesses to, to um, what's been going on mm -hmm. and just standing in solidarity together. And it's so great to see people of all races, uh, yeah, like the human race coming together all around the world, not just in the U.S., but, you know, in Europe, in, you know, in Canada, in the States, Australia, well, I New think, Zealand. And the message is, though, it's not that whatever hate is out there, because there's always going to be hate, there's always going to be more love. Love overcomes everything. It does. So keep that in mind. If you are experiencing racism, we feel for you. We hope that you're able to surround yourself with a supportive group and you're able to talk about it or report it. Um, and just hope that things change and that there's justice for what is wrong. And yeah. that moving forward, we need to like renew our mind to think that just because we don't understand something, we shouldn't be scared and just be hateful. We should just try to be understanding and loving each other more and, and just move forward and exactly if you're not sure then ask questions if you're afraid then educate yourself or take a course do something don't just be on the other side of the screen and just view hate because it's something that you don't understand yeah exactly i mean and i've had a couple of friends reach out to me who they happen to be white and they were asking me you know what they can do and like to hold them accountable if they if I ever hear anything, yeah, you know, and yeah. I expect the same thing from them as yeah. well. Like you know, if I'm saying anything hateful or prejudicial against anybody, then I want to be called out about it as yeah. well. Yeah, you want them to let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's just I feel like as sad as 
I mean, there was many more before George Floyd who were killed. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's the list is it's ridiculous it's, yeah. of how many people have been killed by the police. And yeah, uh, yeah. I'm like Breonna Taylor too. Like her killers need to be brought to justice with them mm -hmm. serving a uh, no knock warrant and killing her in her own bed, basically. Yeah. Like so disgusting but it happened to be that George Floyd's death was the you know the straw that broke the camel's back so let's not let his death be in vain and yeah and also let's not bring up the fact that yeah let we can acknowledge that he had a criminal past but that doesn't mean that he deserves to be murdered and over twenty dollars over twenty dollars like all lives matter, not just black lives. All lives matter. And at the end of the day, like, nobody should be allowed to die for $20. Yeah. And the fact is, is, like, the reason why it is saying black lives matter, it's, it's not to negate the fact, of course, all lives matter. But it's basically saying until, like, black lives matter, then... You know, and here, Indigenous Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. um, until that is true for everyone, then, yeah, no, sorry, all lives don't matter until everybody's treated equally. Mm -hmm. So that's where that stems from. I mean, yeah, because it, it, it's just getting ridiculous with people being, well, don't all lives matter? Like, no, duh. Everybody has Yeah, value. that's not the point. It's just that what happened to George Floyd is what brought it to light. So the fact that they're just talking about that, that Black Lives Matter, because he was black and he died over $20 and police brutality, that's different. Exactly. That's why that's trending. It's not because it's, you know, picking out the black community and saying that, you know, their lives matter more. That's not the point. No, it's, that's, it's not black lives matter more. It's Black Lives Matter because right now... Mm -hmm. So many are being killed left and right because of the color of their skin. Exactly. And that has everything to do with what we're trying to change right now. Exactly. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's pretty much where I'm at right now with this. I just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and as much as this is like a bad time. I also feel God moving with with us with this because he's put, bringing people together, like, yeah, turning these tragedies for good to get people to actually open their eyes and not like, you know, have their rose colored glasses on and pretend like everything's rosy. Like mm -hmm. just because everything's good in your life doesn't mean that you can't Try to make a change or yeah, for others. help somebody else who's going through a hard time. Right. Um, and I think that's where we've been is that, you know, oh, well, it's not happening to me, so it doesn't exist. It doesn't affect like, me, so yeah. I don't really care about it. That's, right. He wants us all to love one another as he's loved us, to forgive one another as he forgives us. Yeah. And I think that, especially in this time, and this age and with everything that's happening now, it's the time to change and just to help be the change that we want to see in the future so that, you know, our kids don't have to go through this, right? Or exactly. Yeah. Because our family, like I can't imagine like my parents walking down the street and just all of a sudden getting assaulted, I would lose it. Yeah. You know, or getting murdered because of the color of their skin or their race. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. And I just wanted to, briefly bring up to um, Martin Gigino, who was like a 75 year old Caucasian man who was like peacefully protesting for black lives and you know that they matter and he was yeah like shoved over by the cops and has like a brain bleed and I don't know if he what other further injuries he has and stuff and yeah, because I just want to make it known, like, I don't think anybody should be getting abused by the cops. I don't care what color you are. Mm -hmm. I just want everybody to be treated equally. And I find that so disgusting. I've seen the video of that, too. And the fact that they just 
like basically walked all there was about I don't know at least 20 officers who just like looked at him and walked by didn't call um you know EMS or anything like that to care for this man and he's like how can you take an oath to protect people when you're doing stuff like that like okay if there's a riot during a protest uh it doesn't give you the right to go and shove somebody so that they're unconscious and they're bleeding and leave them like that yeah you as a cop you should be you know making sure that they're okay and then calling an ambulance before you leave like yeah but he was just standing there like literally standing there and like just talking to them like he might be have been shouting at them like i have been I don't didn't really hear the audio but yeah but regardless still, it's like one unarmed old 75 year old man and like yeah you didn't need to just shove him why don't you go just go around him like go around him or just why don't you just handcuff him yeah or and so that he you know what I mean if he was really if he's you. being belligerent yeah exactly. whatever then just, just handcuff him to a pole or something like there's no need to push him right like yeah or have a conversation how about that yeah like, exactly it just was ridiculous so yeah i just wanted to reiterate mm-hmm. for everybody that that isn't okay either yeah. i don't care who you are where like yeah you could be blue green whatever yeah, yeah exactly. you could be a bloody alien for all <laughs> i care like if you're here on earth right now then like you don't deserve that kind of treatment or behavior and we all need to just yeah love one another exactly and we shouldn't be scared to speak up if we feel like somebody's being racist Mm -hmm. it needs to be corrected yeah it starts from i mean of course we shouldn't be offended by every little thing either right i mean that's kind of where this world is headed you can't say anything you can't joke about anything without somebody being offended yeah um but yeah, you don't want the pendulum to swing too far the other way either. And, like, there's just so much. I mean, we yeah. could go on and on we could about go the on different and on, things. But yeah. but we just wanted to touch on that. Yeah. We just want to say that anybody who's going through a hard time, anybody um, in George Floyd's family and everybody else, like Brianna Tillers, who has lost their lives, we're praying for you. Mm-hmm. We're sending love your way and that we hope that this is going to bring movement and permanent change into our lives for the better exactly right yeah yeah. so i think yeah i mean that's basically what we want to touch on and i don't think we want to go into you know people who pretend to be a person of color to get under our skin oh my gosh yeah right but anyway that actually (laughs) happened yeah people it actually happened yeah yeah not even gonna go there because that's just so disgusting to me on so many levels to actually pretend to be a person of color to try and bully someone and use a fake identity as well like Mm -hmm. you have to be a very pathetic person but that says more about you than it does about us so whatever yeah you do you that doesn't bug us we know we know who we are we know what we want to share and if you don't like it i mean that's the excess for you Thanks for the views. Yeah. Yep. The haters are making our views go up higher. Like, so thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you too. Yeah. Yeah. And going to Hawaii once doesn't make you Polynesian. FYI. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I think we will leave it at that right there. That is too funny. Exactly. Don't wage a war that you know you can't win. No, please don't. Yeah. This just makes me tired, honestly. Yeah, but just don't be like that. I mean, if you have a problem, be an adult. Talk to us. Exactly. There's no need to be doing, you know immature things whatever anyways (laughs) racism exists right we've lived it we're we're proof um but in the end you can come out stronger Mm -hmm. and more loving and kind and we're stronger together exactly yeah solid in numbers so anyways thank you so much for watching everybody we'll see you next time bye Bye. welcome Yes. To a brand new inspiring program. Definitely. That's very informative. I look more pregnant when I look in there. I'm like, <laughs> hello. It's okay. At least you got a good reason. Yeah.